Proposals tend to be highly structured documents, although they can be presented in different ways. Um, and the, the order of the material is not completely set in stone, but the fact that there are certain sections that are common in all proposals is um, important to pay attention to. The first thing that you'll have in the like main part of your proposal after whatever um, like in uh, heading type material you would have, which depends upon the format, the I guess the particular genre of your um, your proposal, which in our case is going to be a memo. We'll be talking about that um, later, but, so after whatever kind of heading header information you have, you're going to have a purpose, a statement of purpose. Um, in short memos, you won't see a statement of purpose. But if it's more than one or two pages long, which yours should be, um, you will have a statement of purpose. So you will want to make sure you include that. You do have in your team folders, a your team project, folder, you do have a um, an annotated proposal memo that you can look at and see an example of what a purpose statement will look like. It's very straightforward and says the purpose of this proposal is, and then whatever that is. Um, following the pr purpose statement, you'll have an executive summary. And this serves as an overview of the entire document. It needs to be clear and concise and succinct, but it needs to include a snapshot of the entire document um, so that the person who is reading it feels like they've read the entire document without having to read it. Um, and that might seem like, well, don't we want them to read the document? Yes, you do. However, you have to remember that for most proposals, you are going to have multiple readers. One reader might be someone who isn't going to read the entire document um, right away. But what they want to do is they want to be able to understand the document so that they can pass it to the right people who will read every word of it. Or so they can vet if they have several pro proposals for a certain project, they can choose you know, the top three to pass on to the committee that's going to be reviewing the proposals in detail. So that summary is important and it really might be the only part that someone reads and that someone might have a lot of authority and power um, when it comes to determining if this proposal moves forward or not. So make sure that you really spend some time working on your summary. Your summary statement, because it is a summary of the entire document, should be the last thing that you write. So you should not be starting off writing a summary statement. That's not how this works. You should be writing the entire proposal and then go back and write your summary, your executive summary, and put that in right after your purpose and before the introduction to the proposal, which the next part is the introduction. The introduction should address the context of this proposal, the scope of the project, and the organization of the document of the project itself. And then you want to present your proposed program, which is what will be done and how it will be done. And that's where all of the other parts come in, is in this proposed program. You should have a section uh, about qualifications and experience. This should be a few paragraphs and it should be about the team, um, each of the team members. Um, again, unless there's a very large team, but if there's a, a small team and in your case, in this as a class exercise, your teams are small enough that you should have a little bit about each team member, their qualifications and their experience. Um, 
this for the purposes of this assignment can be a mix of fact and um, fiction so that it you you want to present your team as qualified to create the product or, or service that you have written about already. Um, and so you might want to draw upon the, some of the real experiences that you've had and what experiences would you need to have in order to really um, carry out this project. You want to have a section that talks about the budget where you're talking about the direct costs and the indirect costs. The direct costs are the things that you have a lot of um, a lot of like estimates for the the costs of materials, the costs of the labor, um, the costs of the team's salaries, the time, you know, the cost of the time that that team members will be putting in, and then the indirect costs are more the things like overhead expenses of the facilities that you're working in and um, that kind of thing there. Um, <clears throat> so you want to, you know, figure out your budget. And again, you want to be realistic about your budget. You don't want to try to bring it in at the lowest price point possible um, just because you don't want to get stuck in a situation where you would be over budget and you're only, you know, a quarter of the way or halfway through your project. The proposal is going to have a schedule. It's going that's going to be a schedule of the work, schedule of the project. And there are different ways that you can show this schedule. One of those is a Gantt chart, which is also kind of a form of a bar graph. Um, or a bar chart, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have an example of that coming up um, soon. And then um, you could use a table or you could use a network diagram. Again, we have a, a, an example of each of those coming up so you can see what those look like um, and what the limitations are of each one. And you also want to have a section possibly where you are discussing your evaluation techniques. And this is, you know, you wanna think of in terms of qualitative and quantitative evaluation as well as formative and summative evaluation. And that may be, um, that may be where you are really talking, you know, how, how often as a team would you be looking at the work that's been done, how will you determine the quality of that work? Um, are you, you know, quantitative? Are you keeping to a schedule? Are you keeping to the budget? How are you showing that as, um, are there other pieces of quantitative data that could show the, um, the project, um, how well it's working or not? Um, and then, you know, how are you going to um, evaluate it as you go? And what kind of evaluations will take place at the end of the project um, before showing your final product? So the proposal, each of those sections is an important part of the proposal. You may move them around. So, you know, with the exception of the purpose and the summary and the introduction, um, those, you know, those go in that order, purpose, summary, introduction. And then within this proposed program section, um, the rest of the elements can go in any order. Qualifications and experience could come after your budget and schedule. Um, you know, your evaluation section, you may not even need to have um, based, you know, a very large part, or it may not even be in your proposal. You may choose to have um, appendices, 
that might have some information, some other parts in it um, that would take some of these things and move them out of the main part. So maybe your qualifications and experience section would be an appendix where you also include a, a um, section about the company itself and the work that it's already done to show that it's capable of doing this project that you proposed. So really in, in this project, you know, not only are you thinking of your product or service, but you also want to be imagining the company that you would be working for to create this product or service. So for many of you, that might mean that as a team, you sort of make up your own company and you give it a logo and a name and a letterhead um, kind of thing. Um, others, you might have a, a, a real company that already exists that you could see doing this kind of project and maybe you just sort of borrow that company for this project. And since this won't be actually published or anything, um, it's okay to borrow a company for it. All right. 